Okay, we're on Demai Perek He Mishnah Tet. So we're still talking about the concept of of Hafrasha Michiu Al Haptur or Miptur Al Just to review, what that means if I have two types of of grain, one is Chayav and one is Patur. So normally we said you want to take Truma on one of them. So let's move this down. You want to take Truma from one of them for both. So I would take Truma off this basket. Okay, off this basket, and we count to be mafris truma to masod for both of them. But if one of them is chiyuv and one of them is ptur, I can't take off of one of them in order to count for both. I can't take off from ptur for the chiyuv, and I also can't take off if I wanted to take from here from the chiyuv to the ptur. Okay, so our mission is going to be a continuation of that uh, of that concept. So the mission talks about what about from a Jewish Israel, from grain that was bought from a Jew to grain that was bought from a nachri. This basket, this sack of grain I bought from a Jew, and this sack I bought from a Nachri in Eretz Yisrael. So in order to deal with this question, we have to first understand, I think I have an extra page here, we have to first understand that there's a huge machloket in the, in the there's a huge machloket in halacha in general, whether, is there what's called kinyan be'eretz Yisrael lafkia midei ma'asot? So one opinion said, meaning, can, when you sell to a goy, does the sale to the goy then uh, affect the transfer of property so that the produce grown by the goy uh, removes the obligation of taking masrot, i.e., no longer the produce is no longer kedushat ta'aretz? Okay. So one opinion says, "En kinyan the goy be'eretz Yisrael lafkia midei masrot," that a goy doesn't have the ability to remove the power of masrot. Okay, and therefore. Even when the goy is selling you, it's still chayav and masro. Okay? There's another opinion that says, that should be ein, that should be yesh kinyan the goy be'eretz Yisrael lefki midei masro. The second opinion says that a goy does have the ability, that there is such a thing as kinyan, that if a Jew sells his property to a, to a goy, okay, then the property becomes the possession of the goy, and it's not chayav and trumot and masro, and you can buy it without. Nowadays, the big enough kamin in this machloket is enough is the, is, is the din of the law of Shemitah. If I say ein kinyan the goy be maso, that means when a goy produces, when a goy, when an Arab grows cucumbers in Israel or oranges or what have you, it's still produce that has to do shata aretz. Whereas if I say yesh kinyan, then the, the goy did acquire it, then the produce does not have kedusha ta'aretz, and I don't have to worry about it having kedusha shvi'it if he produced it on a shemitah year. What's this all based on? So there's a number of different proofs. There's another different sukim. One is from the pasuk in Vayikra, Perek Chafei Pasuk Chaf Gimel. Let's go back to Word. Okay, the, the Torah says, Ve'aretz lo timacher v'tzmitut ki li kol aretz. And the land, lo timacher. We're going to see if it's a machel, what it means. It shall not be sold in perpetuity. Ki li kol aretz, the land belongs to me. So the, the opinion that says, Ein kinyan says, lo timacher, it's impossible to sell it permanently. I.e., what the Torah is here saying is, you physically can't sell it v'tzmitut. Why? It belongs to me, God says. It's my land. So you can't sell it to a goy, it still has to do shatarets. The other opinion reads the Pasuk the same way, but in a different understanding. The Aretz lo timachel this mitut. Lo timachel means you're not allowed to. Don't do it. Why? Kili kola aretz. But if you did sell it, then the mechira is chal. So that's the machloket ein kinyan or yesh kinyan. If you say ein kinyan, that means the produce produced by a goy is, has dusha and have to take off two more if you say yesh kinyan, that means the produce has no kedusha, and you have to, and you don't have to take off to maso. With that understanding, we can go right into our mishnah. It says the mishnah, maasri mishal yisrael al shel nachri, mishal nachri al shel yisrael. Let's go back to our original, uh, our two ba- our two baskets of produce. If one is a Jew and one is a nachri, I can take off truma from. Uh, let's let's let's. Uh, well, we're not going to leave the labels out. From the Jew to the nachri. From one to the other, or from the Nachri to the Jew, that's okay. Because both of them, according to this Mishnah, have a chiv. And let's look at the Bartunur just to understand. Hai Tana Saber, Ein Kinyan the Ovi Kochavim Lafkia Meamaser. So therefore, since Ein Kinyan, there's no such thing as Kinyan, therefore, this Tana, who's Rabbi Meir, believes that any produce produced by a non Jew, the Arab made his cucumbers, or this was Arab grain. It still has to do and therefore there are both chiyuv, even the, the Jewish produce and the non-Jewish produce, and therefore you can take maaser from the Yisrael and Nachri and Nachri to Yisrael. The Bartonura continues and says, no, 
אין הלכה דה קיים עליין, וההלכה איז, יש קניין לעובד כוכבי בארץ ישראל להפקיע מן המעשר. There is a קניין, how do we know דכתיב, and here's הפסוק, והארץ לא תימכר לצמיתות, הלן cannot be sold, may not be sold permanently. ה, אם נמכרה, but if you sold it, צמותה היא, it is sold. So that's the הלכה of מעשים אישי ישראל לשון נכרי, even though we don't pass them like that, we pass them like the other opinion that says you cannot be מעשר, because ישראל is חיוב, and then נכרי is פטור, and that would be מן החיוב על הפטור, or vice versa. Second, excuse me, the second half of the Mishnah. מישל ישראל על כותים, מישל כותים על של כותים. אוקיי? From a Jew on the כותים, remember, this is before the כותים were גיירי אריות. אוקיי? פרד כותים, we learned before, the כותים were the שומרונים, the predecessors. They were גיירי אריות. They had their own interpretation of Torah שבכתב that was more literal. They didn't have the מסר of חז"ל. But כותים did not take off תרומה. They, they didn't have a problem with selling Teva. It's very interesting. Why did they have a problem with selling Teva? The reason we don't sell Teva is for, because of a pasuk that says, Lifnei Iver, is it one vav or two? Two vavs. Lo titen michsho. Very famous pasuk that says, you're not, don't put a, blind, a stomach black before a blind man. Okay, so Chazal interpret that, not only literally, you're not physically allowed to put a stumbling black before a blind man, but you can't do things to mess people over in a way that if they can't protect themselves. So think about this case. If, if, if I'm selling you produce and it's tevel, there's trumot and masrot in it. How could I sell you tevel? That's trumot and masrot. That has trumot. The answer is, you're not allowed to, Chazal permit it. But the kutim, they didn't read this pasuk. Remember, their masorah is much more figure, much more literal. They read, means don't put a stumbling block before a blind man. Literally. Physically, but it had none of the other ideological implications. So therefore, the Kutim felt you could sell Tavel to a Jew. So therefore, if I have, if I have Jewish produce or Kuti produce, then I could be mafrish from one to the other because both are Chiyuv. They are Vadai Tavel. So Vada Chiyuv, it's Chiyuv al Chiyuv. And also Kutim to Kutim, it's also Chiyuv on Chiyuv. Rabbi the Ezer Oser, let's finish the Mishnah. Rabbi Yezer Oser Mishel Kutim Al Shel Kutim. Rabbi Yezer says, no, sometimes Kutim did take off Masrot for themselves. Because they wouldn't eat Tevel, they would just sell Tevel. So what would happen if the Kuti took off, he, he had this produce, and then he thought to himself, I'm going to eat it, and then they decided to sell it. So then that would be produce that he did take off, and the other Kuti didn't have that, he just wanted to sell it, and he didn't take off. So it could be from Chiyuv Al Ptur or Ptur Al Chiyuv, so therefore Rabbi Yezer says, that's forbidden. However, the Chacham and the Tanakhama argue and say that that's not a, that's not a, a reasonable chashash, a concern to have, and therefore they permit from Kutim, Al Shel Kutim as well. All right, if you have any comments or questions, feel free to contact me at rspolter at gmail.com. And I want to dedicate this thing to the memory of my father, Rav Simcha ben Yitzchak Kalman. Have a great day.